So next up, we have an update on KDE Plasma 6. Let's go ahead and bring you on stage, Neil. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? I sure can. I can hear and see you. You have two options to share your, your screen. You can, well, two options to share. You can either share your screen or there's an option to upload your source material directly to Restream. Ah, OK. Uh, how does the upload thing work? So, oh, I can upload PDFs. OK, cool. That actually will make things easier and far okay. less complicated. Um, I will just go ahead and do the download as a PDF and then upload here because I definitely would like this to not suck. I will Let's... say so far it's been pretty smooth on, on this platform for a first time. It's It's gone pretty well. I would just like to not have the screen share randomly fail. That is pretty much it. The ultimate success metric. Yes. Come on. Here we go. Processing. Oh, I could have also import it from Google Drive. That's fun to know. Um, all right. If it, there we go. Let's see. Does that show up now? Sure does. I see yeah. it right here. All right. Hopefully, this means that it's a perfect render from for for the viewers. Yes. All right. Well, Neil, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you. The stage is all yours. Awesome. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about KD Plasma Six in Fedora. So, uh, first. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm an open source advocate. I do a bunch of things in a lot of places. You can kind of see the list here. This is not complete. This is pretty much the stuff that I think would probably be somewhat relevant to you. Anyway, these are all the things. That's fine. Um, so the important part is that I'm the chair of the Fedora KDE SIG and the Fedora KDE Special Interest Group SIG packages and maintains the Qt stack and the KDE software ecosystem for Fedora, as well as Red Hat Enterprise Linux, starting with RHEL 8. Um, we develop and maintain the variants of Fedora Media with KDE software on it. Of course, we love KDE. KDE is the best. So when we talk about KDE, we, we're mostly talking about KDE Plasma, which is the current platform that the KDE community produces to provide a variety of experiences on multiple form factors. You're probably most familiar with the KDE Plasma desktop, but there's also KDE Plasma mobile, and um, there's another, other variants of user experiences that are built on it, such as Plasma Big Screen uh, and, and the like. So what's new with, with this? Well, we have Plasma 6. This is, this is a big one. This is a big deal for everyone. KDE Plasma 6 was released in February, at the end of February this year, and it was incorporated in as part of Fedora 40. Uh, and it's the major experience based on Qt 6. It is mostly a refinement of the existing KDE Plasma experience. So if you've used KDE Plasma um, in the last couple of years, it's probably not too different from you from a user-facing perspective. But it's a big deal um, under the hood because this this was the opportunity to do a lot of cleanup and bring in a lot of new capabilities that really make KDE Plasma probably the best experience you'll ever see from on with Wayland and, and such. And speaking of Wayland, for Fedora Linux 40, the KDE SIG only ships the Wayland session for KDE Plasma. So we are, for all intents and purposes, a Wayland-only platform. Now, we still support X11 applications through that. I'll get to that in a moment. But this was the result of a long journey working with the KDE community upstream, starting with Fedora Linux, uh, I mean, all the way back in 32. But the changes started landing in 34. When we started using Plasma Wayland by default with Plasma 521, uh, we made SDL work using Wayland by default in Fedora 35, which was important for gaming and multimedia applications, as well as all kinds of specialty things. In Fedora 38, we made the transition from uh, to use uh, Wayland for the login manager. So we start from login to shutdown now in Wayland. And with Fedora 40, 
we completed this effort by moving fully over to being Wayland only with KD Plasma 6. As part of this, we are able to introduce all kinds of cool new features with the Plasma 6 Wayland experience. The, the one that people tend to really zoom in on is, of course, because Wayland is a display system, we want to talk about display stuff. So we have now support for applying color profiles and HDR functionality. sRGB for now, but you know, coming in a, in a month or so, we're going to have Plasma 6.1, which introduces wider color gamut supports. Um, including, we also have variable refresh rate and adaptive sync. Now, some of this was already available in Plasma 5, but it's been further refined and enabled um, in Plasma 6. To sidebar here, we also have explicit sync and a couple of these other things that make it better for NVIDIA compatibility um, included. Uh, while it wasn't shipped as part of GA, it's been shipped as updates that are basically ready to go um, within Fedora 40. Um, we also have the most important factor, at least for me, has been the full support for displays of different scaling factors, including fractional scaling, including applying it to legacy applications. And speaking of legacy applications, you know, KDE Plasma Wayland is unique among Wayland desktop environments that provides a number of features to bridge legacy applications into the Wayland world. We have an optional mode for allowing shortcuts to work from legacy X11 applications. So especially um, if, if you have an application that you know uses modifiers to invoke global shortcuts, either for accessibility or, or maybe push to talk or things like that, um, these are all actually possible to still do if you wish to turn that on. Um, we have configurable behavior for scaling legacy X11 applications with a reasonable default. So KDE Plasma's default scaling mechanism leverages the largest scaling factor of your display and uses it to go to the next multiple and scales it down. So it means that while there is still some blurriness um, when it comes to scaling X11 applications in a fractionally scaled environment, it is not a hot mess. It looks actually reasonably okay if you're familiar with how scaling works on Mac OS or even to a lesser degree Windows. Um, when it comes to applications that are not high DPI enabled, this is basically the same kind of thing. Um, the most important thing I think for people who are gamers or creator types is that we have a secure video screen sharing video bridge for legacy X11 applications to access Wayland, uh, Wayland screen sharing. Um, this is the X Wayland video bridge and it allows us to uh, provide a seamless experience regardless of whether your application is a legacy X11 application or a modern Wayland application that has support for um, the, the relevant technologies to do screen sharing. Of course, we naturally have all the native stuff. We have the pipe wire screen sharing. We have the global shortcuts portal. We have all the high DPI stuff and all that fancy works. But the idea here is that for users, this should be as close to seamless as possible for people going from an X11 environment to a Wayland environment, because the most important aspect for giving people an experience that they can use is making sure everything works. And we wanna bring people into the new world without them feeling with minimizing as much pain as possible from, from their use cases and needs from the old world. And so that, that's been the philosophy and that's what we've been working towards. So if you're interested in KDE Plasma, here's the two major variants that we have right now. We have, of course, the Fedora KDE Spin, as well as Fedora Kinoite. Um, the KDE Spin is our flagship. It is the primary thing that, uh, that you see. If you go to the website and go to the spins, you'll see that. And it's our showcase. The goal around the KDE Spin is to provide a curated experience with select applications that demonstrate the best of breed KDE technologies and services within uh, the context of a Plasma desktop. Fedora Kinoite takes a different approach. It's a much more minimal out of the box experience, but it's intended to provide a showcase of leveraging the KDE platform um, with an as an atomic desktop uh, in, this, in the Fedora sense. So it uses RPM OS3 and has a full integration for being able to handle reliable atomic system upgrades and leverages flat packs as the primary delivery mechanism for applications. So what's coming soon? So this is the real exciting part. So the we talked about like all the cool stuff that's in KDE Plasma 6 and, and that's all coming in. And we have that with Fedora 40. Now, what's coming down the bucket list? So 
we've been hard at work at producing uh, on working on a plasma mobile uh, on getting KD plasma mobile into shape. And we're looking to have a KD mobile variant, uh, a Fedora mobile variant using KD plasma mobile with Fedora 41. And of course, plasma 6.1 is coming next month. And or at least that's the current plan. And we hope to bring that into Fedora 40 and newer. And as Carl um, talked about earlier with Apple 10, we are also working on preparing, we're preparing for Apple 10 opening up to bring Plasma 6 to CentOS and RHEL 10 users. And there's way more coming down the pipeline. There's all kinds of cool stuff. I'm really excited about what we're, what we're doing and where we're going and stay tuned. So if you want to help us out, if you're very, if you're interested in the stuff or you love what we're doing, uh, you can come join us. We have a project issue tracker for the KD SIG, as well as a matrix room and a mailing list. So questions, folks. Yes, I realize this was done very quickly. I have overestimated. I overestimated how long it would actually take for me to go through these slides. Well, that is all right. So we have, uh, I just bumped the uh, the thread with questions, but we do have one question that's already come in. And this one's kind okay. of a, a big, big picture question. Where do you, and this is from uh, Tim AOS, that's their mm -hmm. nick. Uh, where do you see the KDE plasma positioned in the greater Fedora ecosystem with the advent of downstreams repeatedly choosing plasma as their base desktop? So that's a great question. I would say that KDE Plasma and Fedora is turning into, I think, the new center of gravity for what um, the next generation of um, builders and creators and developers are really interested in. The functionality that is included in KDE Plasma and the, the efforts that are going on within the larger communities, um, both in free desktop as well as within the KD community, show that there is a large um, drive towards um, engaging with different stakeholders and user types and implementing functionality and capabilities to support their needs. You know, being powerful, flexible, and customizable, while it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all things for all people, um, it does make it a lot easier for us to invite more stakeholders and more communities to be engaged with us, I think, at a level that a lot of other desktops and a lot of other um, projects uh, can struggle with. Uh, and, and we can also see this, like, uh, there are form factors that they're picking, uh, products and form factors that are picking KD Plasma explicitly because of the technologies that are being developed and supported. Um, first there so for example um the variable refresh rate stuff the hdr work that's been going on for gaming and displays um and and other and, and things like tearing control presentation timing uh, th uh things like that they're all coming down the pipe in a way that helps support creators developers and users uh very quickly and i think that continues to excite and uh, that continues to excite people in a way that I don't think we've really seen in the Linux desktop over the past, you know, 10 years. It definitely is exciting to see a lot of the momentum that's going on behind KDE these days. And perhaps related to that, this next question from VW Bus Guy, perhaps a little bit of a controversial question, but uh, what is still missing for Kinoite? Kinoite? to become the main flagship Fedora flavor? It lacks compatibility. And I think this is the same problem with Silverblue and really any of the Atomic desktops. The If you have to know that you are running an Atomic desktop to use an Atomic desktop properly, you failed. And that is, that is uh, where I feel the, the next frontier of, of making that um, a good experience and something that I personally would be con uh, wor would be willing to promote up front. Um, like the fact that today we still have it where third party software struggles to be installed on these systems or that certain types of integrations are just flat out broken 
because of limitations within flat pack or limitations within system integrations, limitations within sandboxes, or constraints imposed by the underlying RPM OS tree system. There's a long list of those, I'm not going to get into that. Like there's enough of these little roadblocks and paper cuts that like, while some of the, a lot of these can be hand waved away in a traditional Fedora system, you can't really avoid them in an atomic system. And so they need to be dealt with. The end state should be, it should be absolutely transparent to the user, whether it is an, whether it's a Fedora imaged or atomic desktop or whatever you want to call it versus a traditional desktop where we assemble the system and ship it that way um, and use pa uh, package management to manage the software. Um, I, from a, from a Kinoi perspective um, in the KDE SIG, there have been steps where we're working towards this. I can't say that I know whether that's happening for all the other atomic desktops, um, but it, it is a slow burn so to speak, to kind of get there. Right now, it's really useful for container enthusiasts and people who are really weird about containers um, and 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 sandboxed applications and stuff. But like, I mean, if you in, if you have to work with enough weird combinations of hardware and software, it, it, it starts falling down. And that's that's sort of the thing that we we have to acknowledge and work towards resolving. I mean, and also things like accessibility don't work in there because the accessibility interfaces are by default not punched through for sandboxed applications, which is really a bad state of affairs, right? So like, these are the kinds of things that even are super big paper cuts that are like, no, we, we can't, we can't reasonably promote this until, until we get to a point where all these issues are resolved in a way that users don't have to think about it. Well, it will be interesting to hear a little bit later on in the schedule, both today and tomorrow from some of our other image-based uh, downstream, I think, yeah, all downstream, yeah. Ultramarine and uh, Universal Blue tomorrow. So there will be some more deeper dives on those coming up soon. Yeah, I'm looking got, forward to that. Yeah, me too. Well, the questions keep flooding in here. Uh, our next one, again, this one from Tim AOS again. Uh, are there any hindrances to implementing KDE Plasma as a headless desktop interface for services like shells or corporate VDI infrastructures? Yeah, so that's a great question. It's one of the things that me, uh, that I and David Duncan in the Fedora Cloud Working Group, we've been, we've been tag teaming on this, uh, I mean, I'm almost a year now um, working on it. It'll actually be a year in a couple months. Um, the there are a couple of issues so the first issue is that we don't really have a way to trigger a desktop a headless desktop to be set up um from like say a remote login so like if you log in via ssh to to a cloud instance of it we can't spawn a desktop and have you connect to it that that doesn't really exist we don't really have infrastructure within the linux desktop common space to handle headless login properly for a graphical environment. Um, I understand that GNOME with GNOME 46 has some pieces, but it's all private and very custom stuff and has its own limitations and constraints. Um, we don't really have um, an equivalent infrastructure in, in Fedora KDE or really any other desktop. And that's something that has to be worked out. Um, another aspect of it is uh, this insistence on using RDP which creates a second set of problems. The, the, sec the, the problem is that RDP clients on Linux all are not exactly of the highest caliber. Um, there, are a, there are a few of them. They don't all work very well. Um, and the functionality that they support is inconsistent, which makes a remote desktop on RDP a real pain. Um, another aspect of this is, um, RDP is controlled by Microsoft. That we're going to put that out there. And RDP as controlled by Microsoft does not support any open codecs um, out of the gate. So um, one of the big enhancements of RDP that makes it really useful is, across the network is that it uses video codecs for, for the, the screen updates. And it uses audio codecs for the audio transmission rather than sending raw bit streams like VNC and, and, and others do. Um, 
the problem is, while we're fine on the audio part now, all the stuff relevant to audio has been dealt with. For video, the only codec that is the only reasonable codec to choose is um, AVC H.264, and we don't have an open codec supported in there. Um, as far as I know, nobody has really engaged with Microsoft to abend to add a new iterate on the RDP spec to add something like VP9 or AV1 or something that we can actually leverage um, from our side. So this makes things really difficult because um, supporting that and, and, and using it reliably is difficult. Um, so an RDP is special in that it supports login directly and login negotiation, and we just don't have any of that plumbing in Linux at all. There, there's a lot of little pieces like that. And to be fair, this also affects GNOME. Like this is not unique to KD Plasma. Even GNOME's headless login is crippled by a lot of these issues. So um, yeah, so there's there's a lot on the, on the pile. Um, honestly, I kind of wish we could use Spice for more of this stuff, but everyone keeps saying it's not viable, even though I'm not really sure that that's true, but here we are. Um, so yeah. Excellent. So we've got eight more minutes left and the questions keep coming in. So this Maybe one- Maybe I did time it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one, this one's gotten a few upvotes. This is probably a little of a spicy question. What is the missing part of GNOME that KDE Plasma provides better that leads you to think that KDE should replace GNOME as the main flavor? Oh boy. So I've tried to stay out of this discussion, but you've asked it directly. So we're going to, we're going to go full on. We're going to go full on with the chili peppers here. Um, so I think, um, if we're, if we limit ourselves to the technology stuff, um, I think the biggest problem is the biggest thing that KDE offers that GNOME doesn't, uh, is really the broader Wayland protocol support. Like the, there are a number of protocols uh, that um, things like game devs and professional uh, professional applications are either requiring or going to require that KDE Plasma implements that GNOME does not. Um, and that is going to make things very challenging in the long term um, if that doesn't change. Um, if I take the technical part off and I talk about more of the community engagement, uh, the people part of it. Um, I, I think the, the people part is actually the bigger issue rather than the, than the, than the technology part. Um, right now, the relationships between these communities are not the best. And that's something that kind of needs to improve. I don't know how to improve it. I, I genuinely don't know. Um, GNOME is a great desktop. I have a computer with GNOME on it and I use it you know, fairly regularly as my travel laptop because it has some features that I find to be very nice for that, like the automatic time zone changing when I go to new locations. That's not a feature that we have in KD. I'm sure we'll get it someday, but like it, it doesn't exist right now. So that makes it nice. And the laptop used to be an old work laptop. So I just was too lazy to reformat it and it's fine. Um, I find that the, it, the community, if the community engagement, if the relationships between communities improve, all the technology and all the other stuff follows, right? Like once you have people working together better and, and, and there's less bad blood, then you start seeing good outcomes in the technology space as well. Um, but who knows? I, 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 if I could wave a wand, there's so many things I could do. I would do differently. Um, I think that was a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> and like, like, uh, Edward who asked the question, uh, I think it's not the intention to be controversial, but it is a it's a good question to talk about because it's, it's generated quite a lot of discussion in the well, community. Anyways. Well, I know that there's been the change proposal to switch workstation to to switch the default desktop flavor that we promote from GNOME to KDE. Um, you know, I'm not part of that change proposal. That that that's not that's not me in it. But I would also say that it is actually worth us always re-examining our biases when it comes to comes to things like this. Um, I heard a lot during that discussion that kind of disappointed me. One of them was a comment of saying, we should always do this because this is what we always did because it's traditional because we do it. And that is a pretty bad circular reason. Like if you if that is your core reason for why we do something, that's a bad reason. And uh, we should never use that as a justification for doing something. 
because that results in stagnation and also like bad bad dynamics overall from a community engagement point of view right like it does it demoralizes people it makes it difficult for people to feel like that they will be heard or that things can be done so you know we should always be mindful that that is something to 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 take account for for sure and to segue off of that you know one thing that i'm always grateful for is that in open source communities we have these abilities to have these channels and discussions with other people and communities it's not always easy but it's something that is uniquely the open source way so i, re I retain my optimism that we can continue to make things better we have about three minutes left. I suspect that'll be time for one more question. And our last ones are all ra rated the same. So <laughs> I'm gonna make, we'll do this one that's fun. And if we have time, it might be a quick one at the end. Uh, but this one is from Ryan, a simple one. What's your single favorite new feature in Plasma 6? Oh my gosh, uh, my single favorite new feature. Um. Wow. Um, honestly, it's the I, I didn't even cover it in my slide deck and I should have because I kind of like I put it together and I forgot about it. But it's the improved um, uh, uh, tablet input support. Uh, and because I use a uh, so I like to dabble with art and stuff. And I also have one because, you know, whatever. But I have a Wacom tablet and I like being able to draw and do things with it. And I mean, the dumb thing is I use it with Ocular to be able to sign documents because I don't want to print it out and then scan it again because that's that's stupid. So I, I like I love that uh, the tablets can actually be now used both as a, a pointer device as well as they work really well as a as a drawing device. Um, I've used it with Krita to just play around with stuff, and Krita on Way on Plasma Wayland with it works fantastic. Um, I mean, again, my, my second best feature, honestly, is probably the VRR thing. The VRR thing is a big deal, um, but it's also not new. Uh, HDR and color profiles is new to six. And I haven't really had a chance to use it because I don't do a whole lot of things that require me to change the color profile. Um, yeah. I know there are people that do, but that's not a thing I do. But I, I understand it's a very cool feature. Nice. All right, and this one, this will be a one sentence answer. Uh, any choice, any chance Kinoite will be renamed Fedora Atomic Plasma? No. <laughs> All right. Well, there are some other questions in the Q&A thread, Neil, if you want to jump in and see those after the session. Uh, there's a few more that are in the thread. But otherwise, thank you so much for coming up and sharing the latest news about KDE Plasma 6 here with the release party. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Bye, y'all.